Now, what they seek to do is, for one, to be a rapid fire kind of magic in a ceremonial sense. You know, the, the sigils, I can repeat the versicle and I can get a much needed result when I need it. But when they are all interlocked together, what they had, what the effect of them is, is to elevate your frequency and to change your vibrational resonance in the third dimension and to facilitate slipping in and out of a ritual state when one wants to practice magic. Um, I can remember once they were completed, I actually have very little memory of 2015 when we were inside. Like I remember that whole year as a vague dream. It took a very long time to get used to the frequency change, but it was well worth it. Now the, to touch on the Enochian, the, aside from the Laogaea, the Heptarchia, Demistica, and the Enochiana itself, this falls into both ceremonial and high magic, whereas the, uh, the sigil magic and the, um, the summoning of angels for wisdom and whatnot, these fall into the ceremonial but where Enochian has its real power and where it has the most to give us is its high magic. And high magic is not a term most people have heard before. And the, what high magic is meant to do is it's meant to be aimed at yourself. It is meant to elevate. It is meant to augment your body. It is meant to uh, increase your intelligence. It is meant to increase the power of your auric body, so on and so forth. It essentially forces the hand of your evolution. And the root of it was um, the Enochian calls, as you remember, that we uh, sat down and phonetically laid out the, the first Enochian call so that we could actually activate the, the holy table and then the sigillum de Amoth. Right. <clears throat> you and I have actually done this together. And that, for anyone looking to get into Enochian, um, your best bet is Lon Milo Duquette and Gerald and Betty Schuler as uh, Enochian practice. This is going to, these two authors have done the greatest job of laying it out. You'll see a number of books on Enochian. You want to stick with Lon Milo Duquette and Gerald and Betty Schuler. So let's talk about the benefits that you have, or the, I guess, for lack of a better term, you can even say blessings mm. that you have gotten from them. Um, I noticed, I remember when I first met you, that your skin seemed a lot more scarred mm -hmm. from your burns. And now that I see you now, and I'm going to go ahead and share a few pictures of, of your, when you've gotten out, and how you totally, it seems like a lot of that scarring is gone. Have yes. you lost a lot of scarring? I have. And that is, uh, there's been a number of physical changes. And that is, well, one of the gifts of the darker path is that there, uh, that resonance with your frequency can have an effect on your DNA. You will get stronger. You will see a reverse in your aging you will see an increase in your intellect. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm 39 years old and I have the physicality of a 20 year old. And you can remember when you first met me, I did not always have this physicality, did I? I was no. a very different person physically when we first met. I remember, I, I, remember, was, I remember them struggles with them burpees, believe me. Yep, I remember, yeah. I remember, I I remember was, very I well. I was not the top in any way to Right. Yeah. So on that, there it is. Uh, the, we call it gifts. We call it blessings. But one thing I would caution is that you do have to wear them. Is they're not just simply given to you. They, they come with your hard work. I mean, I'm, I'm a living example of that in myself. I mean, you know, you were there with me when my mother passed away. You were there with all the, all the times we, we've, you know, counted her in our thoughts and in our blessings to like heal her of the cancer. You remember them days? Um, 
You remember the uncertainty yeah, yeah. that I had of wondering where the hell I was going to go. Remember? What was I going to do? I had, yeah, I had nowhere to go. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. And a lot of this entrusting, this embracing of, of this path that we basically kind of like joined together as me, you, and Rocky as three that were perfecting each other in our, in our quest, that a lot of that, you know, I give, basically I, I, I give thanks to because it was a lot of that that's, that's gotten me to where I am today, man. I mean, I'm sitting at the top of the mountain. You know what I mean? I got my own home. I'm getting ready to purchase my own home again from here. Um, my, my credit score is like pretty much excellent now. Like I got, I got credit card offers. I used to get those dummy cards that come from God knows where that wants me to pay money to get it activated. Now people are, credit card companies are offering to give me money just to, just to take them on. Um, mm -hmm. I got a, I got an excellent career where I make, where I tell people that after all my bills and everything are done, you know, my profit intake is about $45,000 after everything is paid. And that's Excellent. more money that's, yeah, that's more money that somebody in California who's making, you know, $250,000 a year, $100,000 a year. That's more than they're taking home after they're paying all their taxes and their, for their kids and their wife and their homes and everything else. Um, well, let me ask you this. You didn't have to sell your soul to get it, did you? No, I didn't. I didn't sell my soul to nothing. You know what I mean? Nope. I mean, I'm as, I'm as independent fucking and detached from all this, from all this as, as you could possibly get. It's like I've, I tell people on my show all the time, man, I am a completely independent, objective, free thinking personality. And I don't, I don't subscribe to anything. I don't pay homage to nothing. I don't tote any party line. And I am a living embodiment of success in its greatest definition. Because where a lot of these other people that are in various different channels, various different social media outlets, the people you see on TV that the, that the media is promoting as far as criminal justice reform, all those people had a great deal of help, assistance, managers, caseworkers, a whole fellowship and a whole army of people at their disposal to help them get there. It was very little resistance or work of many of these people to do on their own. Mine was much more difficult. I literally was brought to Oklahoma City with nothing, absolutely nothing, and with not a single person to, like, send me in the right direction. A couple of people gave me a couple of things here and there. Somebody, somebody, you know, my mentor gave me a cell phone, a little cheap Nokia cell phone. Somebody else sent me a gift card. But outside of that, there was nothing. Nothing at all, you yeah, know, and you yourself exactly and empowering yourself and right quote unquote embracing the darker path. You freed yourself from intellectual slaveholding, and that freedom from intellectual slaveholding allows you to blossom into the divine being that you were meant to be. And so that's why I asserted again. That is why you're enjoying great success. You did not sell your soul. You did not sacrifice a goat. You right. empowered. You empowered yourself, and it's and it's the most amazing feeling a person can have. Not only that, but we can also um, get into the artistic gifts that mm. one person will get. You know, in my own pursuit. It is, it is benefiting my, it's benefited my writing and my, and my ability to kind of like seek out and find the truth in a lot of these things. A lot of these, these prisons that people put us in. You, your art mm. is, is some of the most beautiful art I've seen. Well, thank you, JD. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, and it didn't start out that way. It started out where your art wasn't so great, but in just a short period of time, your art is like phenomenal. The well, detail you. that you have in, in, in drawing portraits of people just by taking a small picture of them, all these things. And I'm going to, like I said, put various different pieces of your art up right here. 
to show people like what you're capable of doing. Um, has that artistic gift been given to you as well? It's, it has blossomed. As I've said, the, the more freedom you get, the more severed from what you would call source consciousness, the more severed you come from the light, the more you impose your own will and become who you are meant to be, you will live in a state of constant amazement of what you are really capable of. And you will find that you will succeed in whatever you are passionate about. Bar none. If, if you want it, if your will is focused on it, on achieving it, you will get it. You will just, you will just do, as Aleister Crowley said, you will just do. And yeah, I mean, I have to say that I, I am beside myself sometimes when I complete a bit of art. And, you know, I take that step back and I look at it and I just, you know, I, I am amazed that I created this with my hands. And as you stated before, it wasn't always like that. I really, really struggled. But as time went on, just, it's like gates open. It's like the governor comes off the engine. And you're becoming more of who you were meant to be. And I have to recommend it to everyone out there. Um, people are going to have reservations about the left-hand path because many of them are, I guess, centered around an infernal pantheon. Now, what do I mean by the word infernal pantheon? Every religion has one. Okay, you go into Egypt, you had Set, you had Anubis, you had Nephites, so on and so forth. You know, you've... Your, your Nordic religions, you, you know, Helena, you had uh, Hecate in ancient Greece, you know, Hades, Christianity, it's your Lucifer, it's your Satan, so on and so forth. But what needs to, what the truth is about these entities, and I'll, I'll call it deific masks, because Lilith was Hecate in ancient Greece. Uh, Lucifer was set in ancient Egypt, but it doesn't matter what names you call them. It's a deific mask. I promise you they don't care. But what needs to be asserted is that these are not gods in which you bow down to and surrender your will to. That is Hollywood propaganda. That is a very Christian, Judeo, Islamic take on how a human should interact with a divine being that you should grovel and kneel at their feet the infernal pantheon will be very disgusted with you if this is your attitude towards them what you need to do is look at them the left hand path as a university and these infernal pantheon your lilith your lucifers your hecates your morgans your sets your anubises as professors as teachers, and that is how they want you to view them. They're not looking for your will. They're looking for your attention. They want to teach you. They don't want to own you. They want to elevate you to their level. They don't want to keep you down. They want to set you free. But some people's programming runs a little too deep, and this has been considered. So if one is looking for a left-hand path pursuit that wants to divorce itself from any infernal pantheon of whatever demographic or culture that it comes from, there is a wonderful path called the fourth way by a very brilliant individual called Gurdjieff. And for any looking for a left-hand path pursuit without any infernal pantheon, this is where you need to be. And a funny story about Gurdjieff, he's one of the few intellectuals in occult history that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aleister Crowley and win. So that's, that's something Crowley I just don't like to like, touch point on. But Gurdjieff kind of took a chunk out of his ass, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Let me get this. So in, in essence... 
to sum all this up, basically, this whole thing has been sold just like any other lie. But in actuality, most of these people that teach people to stay away from the left hand path, most of these people actually follow it themselves. Is that, yes, is that enough? Do. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, uh, many of these so-called uh, super Christians are actually ceremonial magicians behind closed doors. I mean, in, 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 I mean, we talked a lot about the Apostle Paul, the mm -hmm. inventor of Christianity, if Paul you remember. Him. Oh, yes. Yeah. Old Apollonius of Tyana was his real name. Yes, and he, was. he was a Pythagorean magician. And even mm -hmm. in the book of Acts... If you remember when he came across, um, what was that guy's name? I can't remember his name, but it was in one. He came across him, and he basically yeah, yeah, turned yeah. him blind. Remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Blasted him with a staff full of, of mist and turned him blind. Um, you even got some of the, the Gnostic teachings that basically had the Apostle Peter killing Simon Magus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also even some speculation that would say that Yeshua or Jesus was actually not only was he a composite figure of many different, he was kind of like an archetype or, you know, like a contemporary, like a, a figure that was a combination of several different people. Um, but one in particular, his, his, Miracles and magical workings was actually attributed to a, a Jesus Ben Bendira or a, a, a magician himself. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to get into this because there's a lot that people don't know. People just blindly follow something without knowing the true history of it. Um, and we've seen, like I said, in how it works through you, I guess the ultimate truth to this whole thing is in essence what really works for you not so yeah. much of what what it works as far as conforming to society and their mm -hmm. views but in essence what really works for you and when i see you i see you right there and you're with your your beautiful wife kayla hi kayla hey. and um you know, it, it seems that you guys have a very strong connection of love. This is true. And love would be something that people that are followers of the right-hand path or the exoteric traditional literal teachings would say, well, how are these dark people, how could they experience any kind of love? Because it's, love would be antithetical to the dark side. Explain to us how love is completely and ultimately embraced on the left-hand path. Oh, wonderful, thank you. Well, first of all, let's go back to the, uh, the previous programming of how they want to lay claim to any kind of positivity and then assert any kind of negativity towards the dark. And number two is that no religion, no faith, no culture, no country has a monopoly on love. Love goes beyond, I guess, what you would call an emotion. We in the left-hand path and magical practitioners have known for tens of thousands of years is that love is actually an energy. It is tangible. It can be focused. It can be directed. What most people think of love is actually just love, the energy's effect on your body. To put this in kind of a context, you touch an electric fence and you feel the shock. Is that shock what electricity is? Of course not. It was just its effect on your body. So with that said, we use love and focus it and direct it, whereas others will simply just revel in its physical sensations and acumenical sensations on your body. And why this is, is magic is the real nature of the human animal. And we go back through history, and the, what is undeniable is that gods rise and fall. Um, every established religion, any major god, they have their time, and then they die. 
some peter out uh kind of without a footnote others have apocalyptic failures such as christianity and islam but what has stayed alive and stayed with us since prehistoric times has been magic now that is not an accident Something that isn't real, something that isn't tangible, something that isn't us is not going to survive. The falsehoods that we impose upon ourselves, those crumble, those turn to dust. Magic stays with us. And throughout the course of my life, I have, I've come with a theory. I'm not sure how to prove it, but I believe I've, I've spoken this with you when we were in group together a number of times is that the reason why we have so many what you would call drug addicts is because I, I, I suspect that drug addicts are actually secretly unformed magical practitioners. And what I mean by that is that the five senses is not enough. These people crave an altered state, and you achieve an altered state through your ritual state. And when you, when you try to force a being that has a divine spark, such as the human being, into a five sense reality, that is when you run into these constant problems that we have, these addictions, this, this overwhelming depression, this feeling lost and hopeless for no reason, is because the intellectual slaveholding of our culture has cut us off from what we need to become who we really are and we get love in the sense of i i love my lifestyle or love your kids or you know basically love your quality of life that is the only love we're even really taught anymore we are not instructed those outside of magical practice to harness love to hone love to direct love to impose it on the darkness and make our own light with it so that is why luciferians typically have deeper bonds than what you would call your christian right great <clears throat> that was a great um definition of it and probably would put it to bed for a lot of different people that are actually free thinkers and broken out of their optical boxes that they put themselves in. So, um, finally, I'm going to go ahead and end on this. I don't take too much more of you guys' time. We've been on here about an hour. I'll be breaking this up into two parts so that people can actually watch it and watch both parts with, with comfort. Um, you do you do um create a bunch of beautiful art. Are you in the process of trying to like sell your art or do you sell your art? I'm actually doing commissioned artwork now finally. I believe that I've I've reached kind of a point to where I can um take direction and I've I experimented with a number of different styles as <clears> you see. Um between smoothing, between rough, you know different brush techniques and i've settled on a form in which i am comfortable with and that i have great confidence in and i am currently uh painting an astroth for a friend at this uh goth club that i work security at on the weekends and so far so good it's turning out well so um in that interest um i will provide means to contact me if anyone out there would like an occult centric piece of art created and it should be noted that i do place magic in all of my paintings uh, my favorite form is the enochian sigil magic and once the sigil magic is placed on the painting i will write out a phonetic activation phrase on the back of the painting so that the user can use it as they see fit what do you think? What do you think of the antenna that I got right here? Yeah, I love the kitties. <laughs> you know, they're very, they're very much in tune to a lot of the six senses of things, and they see things that we don't see. Absolutely, cats are wonderful. 
the fact they were worshipped in Egypt and cultivated to live in the temples is not an accident. Unfortunately, my love here is violently allergic to them, so we have to go without the lovely cats. But they, um, they're half in, half out. They can see the malevolent entities that would seek to prey on you because their main form of attack is being invisible and unseen. And cats see them, so they typically don't like to stick around. Cats keep a house nice and clean. Yeah, because honestly, this house right here, this house right here that I live in has a very violent past. Mm. I'll be talking about that in the future, but yeah, there was actually a couple of murders that occurred in this house. One guy got, one guy got, you know, attacked with a hatchet and killed. Another person killed themselves in here. Somebody, somebody got shot on my front porch. So. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> so how, um, in closing, how would, how would anybody who wants to experience your art, how would they be able to find you? Um, I'll send you a link to my Facebook page. Um, I post all my art onto there. I, uh, I keep it nice to where my best artwork will be like right there on the featured section on a page. So they don't have to go rifling through my, through all my photos and things like that. I, I try to keep it simple. And um my messenger is wide open we don't have to be friends for someone to send me a message so it should facilitate things nicely awesome brother hey i love you love you to death man man i love you too jd it's good to sit down and dialogue with you man it was like the good old days yeah and i look forward to you know one of these days going up there and seeing you guys you know what i mean real soon yeah, hopefully we yeah we'd love to have you by all means yes so let me go ahead and close this out in typical prison break raw fashion. I don't know if you know what the closeout entails, but yeah, I don't, but hey, here we go. All right, well, I'll give it to you once we get to that. Prison break raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, non sugar coat, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that. What are we slapping them with? That esoteric left handed truth. Actually, we're slapping him with that dick of reality, but close, close. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. That's what yeah. I get. <laughs> I should just and, be an asshole and embrace it. Awesome. And we out, everybody. See you later.